This is the all-electric BMW i3. It uses electricity that you generate out there somewhere and then it's pumped into the batteries that sit beneath the floor well for later use. But could it be a whole lot simpler? What if we ditched the power plugs and outlets all together and ran a car just on solar? Well, today we're gonna to meet two university teams that are taking part in the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge to see if that idea has any merit. So the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge is a 3,000 kilometre race from Darwin to Adelaide where teams from around the world uh, race their solar cars. It's an international competition where there's 53 teams from 24 countries. There are a lot of hard parts about the challenge. Um, one is building some of the most efficient cars on the planet. Two is transporting a team of student engineers across a continent and three is competing, so there's a lot, of, a lot of components to that. There's three categories, and there's cruiser, challenger, and adventure. So on my right is our car. Uh, that is a challenger car. That's purely uh, made to be the most efficient vehicle possible. So the challenge for us is point to point and how fast we can get there. On the left is cruiser car, and that there is done in practicality and uh, energy efficiency, and adventure is the legacy cars. So tyres are by far one of the most important things on the car. Bridgestone supplies with the best tyres that you can put on the car and definitely one of the reasons why we can win races. If you were to stick a GoPro on the side of the car, it increases the drag by at least double, which is pretty incredible. Our car is more aerodynamic than the door mirror on your car. So this year we've gone with a, uh, a different type of solar panel. Uh, we've gone with a space grade cell, which allows us to get a lot more energy from a much smaller area. From that, we've built a smaller, lighter car, which means a more efficient vehicle. So I definitely see that there's a place for solar panels in, in the car and in the, in the automotive industry, and I definitely think it's for those secondary systems like uh, your audio system and your aircon, but that's to be a lot more improvements to be the, the sole supplier of energy. Matt, you're the project manager for the SunSwift solar car. This thing is seriously cool. Um, can you give me some detail about the car? What are we in? How does it work? So basically it's a solar electric car, so you can kind of think of it as an electric car, but besides having the battery for power, it also has the solar panels as well. Um, so it gives us a bit of uh, extra range and also like power. Yep. And how different is this to an electric car that someone may drive on on a public road? It's obviously been made um, by, by students, so undergraduate students at UNSW. Um, it's a lot lighter than a normal car, it's probably about half the weight, so it's yep. only about 500 kilos. It's a lot more efficient as well. We probably use about a tenth of the power of a normal yep. electric car. And yeah, I guess it's, a, it's much more simplified as well. And how long does it take to build this car and perfect it so that it is good enough to, to take part in the challenge? It normally takes teams about two years to build a car. Yep. So there'll be one year design period and then uh, the second year is the build period where you actually um, put those designs into practice. Yep. And how much sun do you actually need? I mean, today, We've landed an incredibly cloudy day and it's starting to rain now as well. They do have a battery on board, yep. so you could have, you could drive, theoretically drive at night. You yep. don't need solar output to drive. Yep. Um, if we drive at about 60 k's an hour on a flat, we can run straight off solar, if it's a good day. That is so cool. <laughs> this thing is seriously awesome. Okay, so we are going solo at the moment. This is interesting because right now we have solar arrays on the cars, is similar to what you'd find at home. Except what they do here is they're charging a battery. Now the battery is kind of secret because this is the competitive advantage that teams have in the World Solar Challenge. And I've got a throttle here on the steering wheel. I pull it down to accelerate. And it's not like a Tesla P100D, like a Model S. It doesn't shoot you forward. But we're talking about one wheel drive. It has an in-hub, a rather in-hub wheel motor, and we are getting pulled along nicely. Got a kilowatt of power, and then it can jump up as you're getting onto these faster bits. It actually gets along really nicely. The steering is incredibly direct because unlike a normal road car, you don't have power steering here. And you've got to keep in mind as well that these teams are going to be traveling from Darwin to Adelaide. So it is predominantly a straight run. You're just driving straight ahead virtually. Um, but you're going to have to overcome obstacles like trucks, they generate a lot of wind, and then other vehicles that are going to be passing around you. <laughs> this is so much fun. It, this is like the, um, the solar car equivalent of a Lotus. It's very darty, 
and you can be really confident with the power. Just feed it in and the thing just shoots away nicely. So anyone who thinks that electric cars don't work because they don't do long distances, keep in mind these guys are gonna be traveling down the center of Australia in one of these cars. This car will have a canopy on it when they're driving it. I just wanted some wind in my hair and it will get bloody hot in here given it will be virtually summer. This is a seriously awesome experience. So Bridgestone supplies the tyres to all the Australian teams in the Bridgestone World Solar Car Challenge. And this car is running a set of them now. They're quite a soft compound tyre. You may think that's counterintuitive, but they aren't doing super, super long distances after that initial run from Darwin to Adelaide. So when we talk about the Australian automotive engineering industry being dead, well, it's people like this that are going to end up working at big car companies, developing the next generation of electric cars. I'm convinced that solar technology will be at the forefront of the next set of automotive endeavors because you may as well harness the energy there from the sun, given it's free of charge. The Bridgestone World Solar Challenge is on from October 13th to 20th. So make sure you tune in to see how the Australian teams fare. So has the idea got any merit? Yeah, it absolutely has, but we're not gonna be running cars entirely on solar anytime soon. Obviously there's no light at night, which is kind of an issue, but we can use solar panels to charge batteries and run auxiliary systems. So in the future, we could see more cars fitted out with these high energy dense solar panels. And it's good to see companies like Bridgestone learning from events like the World Solar Challenge and putting that play into practicing cars. To read more about this, head to caradvice.com and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I could stay out there all day. <laughs> That was so much fun. Oh my God. You look like you just unwrapped your first <laughs> This thing is so bloody cool. You guys should make like a, a solar race car. I reckon that'd be, that'd be awesome. This is a solar race car. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> <laughs>